so yes, yeah, so uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for inviting me. It seems like a, a nice group you have here and uh, unfortunately I don't speak Danish so uh, I'll probably will never be able to join the group and maybe at one point in the future but uh, it sounds very exciting the things you're talking about. What I want to talk about this evening is probably not what Pelle just talked about which is the Denmark analysis. I mean I think you will know Denmark for us is 1% of our market. The work I've been doing is the global corporate branding at Nova Nordisk. But of course that has a knock-on effect to Denmark. But even if you look at Denmark from our communication perspective, um, you know, media coverage is probably 80% comes from Denmark and 20% of the rest of the world. I mean, there is such a, a big focus on that. But that is not going to be my focus. But what I am going to talk about is the things we've done since 2004 to build the Nova Noise corporate brand globally. And I believe the steps we've taken um, can be applied anywhere. The, the, the major steps that need to be done to involve corporate branding and develop corporate branding in an organization I believe I can share with you and they're, they're great take-home tips for any company. And in actual fact, you do not only have the pleasure of me, but Markela, who is going to speak, is my partner in crime. Because Markela worked at Nova Nordisk for many years uh, and was a major part of all the things I'm going to talk about. So some of the initiatives that I'll introduce were actually Markela's initiatives. So uh, you know, afterwards, you'll have the pleasure of both being able to ask me questions, but you can ask her a hell of a lot of questions too about uh, a lot of the, certainly some of the public relations work we did throughout the years. So... Uh, just that caveat. I joined Nova Noise in 2004. Um, Nova Noise has always had a very good image, but there was a need in the company to really position ourselves and really talk about who are we as an organization. A lot of things going on, uh, developing pipeline, uh, developing diabetes uh, world, uh, a lot of exciting projects coming as from our other therapy areas like hemophilia. So there was a group put together to talk about two different strategic directions. No one else is very well known for our sustainability, very well known for the, the work we do there, very well known for our responsibility work. So this kind of whole leadership with responsibility positioning was a very interesting one for the company to pursue. And the other one we were talking about was this leading the fight against diabetes. So could we, as a becoming leader, try and take this role as leading the fight in the world? So we were at this crossroads, and this is when I joined the company. What we did is five steps to actually uncover this positioning. First one started with the kind of very existential part of our brand and really talking about, okay, so how do we develop the brand going forward? So setting this strategic direction. First thing we did, a lot of interviews with uh, key internal stakeholders like this gentleman here, Lars Rubin Sørensen, our CEO. And back in 2004, he said to us, I would like Nova Nordis to be seen as proactive, courageous, innovative and aggressive. He used the word like aggressive, not very Danish, right? Um, but wow, that was, that was some big things. And he says, I think we are all those things, but we, people don't necessarily have that perception of us. Interesting insight, and one of the key ones we took away into the brand work. And we asked a lot of our employees too. Nova Noise is not well known outside of Denmark. We're not, we don't get the, the value of all the great things we do. Now, personal story, I live in Sweden. So I go over and talk about Nova Nordisk over there. People, Nova what are you, Novartis? What, you know, what are you talking about? No idea. Of course, in Denmark, I say Nova Nordisk, and everyone has some perception or some feeling of Nova Nordisk. But using that point, our employees also feel the same thing too. It's changing, but we're getting there. What else was going on in, is the marketplace. And this is where things are really interesting. In the diabetes field, where Nova Nordisk basically delivers a lot of its thing within insulin treatment, we had a lot of big, 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 big players. Big pharmaceutical companies, a lot of big weight, big marketing muscle coming into our area. And because diabetes being the, the area it is, there's a lot of different related disease areas, uh, project areas, which will have an influence on diabetes, and particularly our area of insulin treatment. So suddenly we were finding ourselves in a league where there were companies like Pfizer and GSK and Eli Lilly and Baxter and all these massive, massive conglomerate pharmaceutical companies. So... We needed to do something here to defend our position, that's for sure. Also, the pharmaceutical reputation doesn't get the best rep uh, around the world um, because of many, many different issues uh, of different pharma companies, individual cases, individual projects, but also generally uh, over the last decade, there's been a lot written about the pharma industry. And so we knew even if we were moving into the league of big pharma, we needed to differentiate from the other guys. 
And I think the biggest thing which is driving a lot of our positioning work was this, that diabetes is a global pandemic. It's a bigger killer than AIDS, and people don't realize how massive diabetes is and what it's doing in the world, and especially back in 2004. I think now there's a lot more talk about this in the media, there's a lot more healthy lifestyle discussions, but back then, there wasn't a hell of a lot communicated, to be honest. There were, there were bits and bobs, but people really didn't understand or grasp the size of the problem. So, you know, that number is just increasing, increasing year on year. So, somebody has to take some leadership here. So, all of our research, our internal research, our interviewing Lars and uh, all the different analyses did of competitors, it basically led to two major things. Our positioning meant that we need to be proactively visible. Now, for Nova Nordisk, that's about us actually going to say, yes, we're going to start putting our name out there. Not very Danish, not, you're not very humble, but we need to start. You know, we've got big American conglomerates communicating. We need to be pushing our brand. Um, we need to link our core brand, our product branding. If you're familiar with the pharmaceutical industry, there's a lot of emphasis put on the products and the great products in the pipeline, but sometimes the corporate brand is left behind. But so could we leverage the fact that we had a lot of marketing muscle in our product brands? We needed to claim leadership. We couldn't say we were the leaders back then, but we need to go out and really you know, put our stake in the ground and say we are the diabetes leaders and we're going to lead the cause forward from here. And we should use that responsibility angle to differentiate from Big Pharma. The, the, the mere thing that we've had that as part of our uh, business for over 20 years now, where other companies are only just now really waking up to sustainability, it's been part of our articles of association for 20 years. So it's a very central part of who we are as a brand. So what makes Nova Nordisk different back in 2004 and still today? It's our focus in diabetes. It's his proven passion and commitment which we've had be behind developing the things we've been doing. That triple bottom line philosophy, which has always been part of our brand and part of the way we do business. And our focus on individual patients. Not saying there's one size product which fits all, it's about finding different solutions for different people. And that really meant that positioning-wise, we leverage that responsibility, but we really talk about positioning ourselves as leading the fight against diabetes. So, the first part, existential part. Second part was how do we build a platform then around this leading the fight against diabetes? We built something called the Nova Noise Brand House, uh, where we put in at the bottom our vision, our values. It's called the Nova Noise Way of Management back then. It's just recently been updated. I'll come back to that. That's the foundation of everything we do. And we put the roof of the house. This is Nova Noise is leading the fight against diabetes. Defeating diabetes is our passion and our business. This, is a, this position is this thing we want to leave behind in all our stakeholders worldwide. And then we started to put in the building blocks of all the things which, are, which can help us live up to this promise. The great people, the great kind of culture we have within the company. All the great science we do, and that science being done particularly to help people live with diabetes. All the care programs we have on top of the science, on top of the products as well. And all the community work we do. Uh, we have a foundation called the World Diabetes Foundation. Um, we have you know, all multiple different assets we can put in each one of these different pillars. So this brand house really helps us develop our thinking and develop our basis. Yes, we can claim this leading the fight against diabetes. But to make the brand house and the communications really flow, we knew we needed to work on a, something bigger than that, something which could really unite people around the world around our positioning. So we ran a whole bunch of focus group testing with healthcare professionals, that's HCPs, and patients around the world, and got them to talk about, well, patient empowerment. How do we really help people try and make change within their lives? And through all these different concept groups and uh, test groups, a one strong concept came across, and I think, you know, if you, you know Nova Noise, you're living in Dan, you, you would have seen this, this is, this is our, it was a tagline, it was something that, it's become something so much more than that since then. But that was how we started to place that as part of the brand house. And we made this then, the roof of the house, that's what we're aiming towards, change diabetes. So our brand house going forward, we could then start to put in all the great assets, our history programs, our science programs, our... Pro, uh, uh, different products and our different uh, educational programs and all the community what we did to build a very strong corporately driven brand house which we believed in. 
Then I remember I mentioned about product branding and corporate branding. We actually took all our product brands and made sure that they were very aligned with the corporate identity. So there was a, a, you know, a complete visual alignment between what we were saying on the left-hand side, our corporate identity, with all our product identity. These guys are spending so much more on marketing communications than we are at corporate. So obviously you want to leverage the fact that their communications, their advertising is out, out there. So that was a, another great part of trying to link that corporate and product branding together. And then roll out. So now we've done the thinking about who we are, what we're all about. We've put the framework together, the platform together. That's been through all kinds of different committees, by the way, and I can talk more about that later if you wish about the, the kind of people we had involved in this, but it went all the way to Lars Rieben and the, and the uh, executive team. But as we rolled this out, I think this is where the success of this program really started to come through. We made a lot of local adaptability. Now you can see here two other brand houses. One is from France and one is from Japan. Um, we went to all of our key markets, Markela and myself, I had a great time traveling the world, but doing workshops with each of our teams. And what we got to do, we said, list all the things you have in people with values. List all the things you have in, so and look, this is the, France, the French one. I mean, over 20 different activities they could say that they were doing, and, and which were already leading towards changing diabetes. Mark Ada remembers the French workshop. That was a, that was a tough one. But, um, but seriously, we just said, that's fantastic. Look, you're already changing diabetes. You're doing brilliant things. Now take two or three really good activities and label them changing diabetes and really communicate those very, very strongly of each one of the different pillars. So they could lean upon all the corporate ones with the Japanese house here, but then add on all their local activities as well to say it isn't just that in Denmark we have this corporate activities, it's all across the world. And locally, we also have many different things we're doing to change diabetes. And then we talked a lot about what is best practice. You know, best practice sharing, we talk about that a lot in business, but we talked a lot about it's about dialogue, it's about partnership, it's about people understanding what we're doing. It's about getting the Nova Nordisk voice out and also to a broad range of stakeholders. You know, for the first time ever, we started talking about general public, for example. So really trying to make that commitment visible to a larger audience worldwide. And then, and this is, Michaela's going to be smiling a lot because we started to do a lot to make the brand visible. Every year, there's, uh, there's two major diabetes conferences in the world. One is called the American Diabetes. The other one's called the European Diabetes Association. Uh, in 2006, so two years basically after, after well, we launched in 2005, so 2006, EASD, the European one, was in Copenhagen. That's like a home football game that we have. The whole of the diabetes community coming into Copenhagen. So for the first time ever, we basically painted the town. And anybody who remembers and to the month of September in uh, 2006, Copenhagen was completely white. It was uh, Nova Nordisk. Uh, Bikes, the whole airport was taken over because um, that's where all the international diabetes folks were arriving. Um, we did a lot of communication about this is no noise, this is what we stand for, this is changing diabetes. But then we started to add projects like, the reason I'm smiling is one of Michaela's projects, which was, well, we need to spread the word even further. So how do we do that? And so Michaela and, and her team put together this changing diabetes bus, we called it, it's a truck, but it traveled the world to communicate, and we basically offered it to all our affiliates, all our offices around the world, so they could also have local diabetes screening activities, diabetes awareness, diabetes education activities in their local markets. And you, know, you can see there's, it's in China, it's uh, out by the Sydney Opera House there, but it, it did literally and has traveled all around the world as part of that. And then we started to do something that we did th uh, this year earlier, um, leadership forums, we're invited in key speakers to talk about the state of diabetes care, to talk about the state of healthcare. Um, the first one was in New York, um, and that was Bill Clinton was speaking there and really speaking about the next generation of people. I mean, what's it like? I mean, it's fine that our generation, but if our generation does not deal with diabetes and healthy lifestyle, it's our kids that are going to be the ones affected. And that's some of the staggering statistics that our children, the generation below us, may actually have lower life expectancy than us. That's an awful statistic, but that's the reality of what's happening. But to get someone like Bill Clinton to talk and then gather policymakers, payers, patient organizations, politicians, media in the same room to talk about that really, of course, generates a whole bunch of communications. And the last and latest one of these was Kofi Annan speaking at the 
European Diabetes Leadership Forum here in Copenhagen in, back in April, where we also did the same thing. And these, these leadership forums are growing around the world as things to really drive advocacy about change in diabetes. So, launched the brand, really made it exposed around the world. A lot of momentum projects have been done and continue as part of that. Um, first one was another big one, and oh, my kid is going to smile again, uh, but a, a massive effort by the whole diabetes community. I'm not saying this is Nova Nordisk alone. This is everybody within the diabetes community aiming to get diabetes recognized by the United Nations. Previously, up until 2006, they did not have a guidance on diabetes care, which is quite shocking and staggering. There was on AIDS, but there was nothing on diabetes care. So the International Diabetes Federation were basically inviting their partners, Nova Nordisk and all our big competitors like Lilly and Pfizer, to come in and do it. And I would say we probably took a very strong leadership role in making this happen. And, and the outcome is that there is now a whole resolution adopted by the General Assembly recognizing November 14th as International World Diabetes Day, recognizing that every country, every UN country must have diabetes plans in place. And so we know that changing diabetes isn't just about the products and the services that Nova Noise offers, it's about a leadership initiative and making change happen across the whole community, across the whole world. And that's you know, another great testament to doing that. Other things we've done is uh, a site called the Changing Diabetes Barometer. When we went out and did our workshops in 2005, 2006, we asked the Phillips, you know, do you know how many people have diabetes in your country? And they're like, eh, we've, got some, we've got some numbers, and the, the Diabetes Federation have some other numbers, and well, let's take leadership on those numbers. Let's try and actually publish what those numbers are. Let's talk about the state of diabetes care, the state of obesity, the, the quality of care people are getting, and let's make it transparent. So this site exists, and people can basically upload their data into this. And it's a real leadership initiative in that we want to be known for driving this change forwards. So this is another place and you can go and have a look at this and compare Denmark to Sweden to UK. My country is really bad, for example. Um, but you can really, you know, really go into each country detail by detail and, and look at the different state of diabetes care. And uh, if you've seen any of our job adverts or whatever, we also worked a lot on embedding this idea of change into the brand and, and through our employer branding as well. Because the one thing I left out of the storyline is when we chose leading the fight against diabetes, we kind of left behind a few of the other people in the organization who don't work with diabetes. People who work with hemophilia or growth hormone or HRT. Um, difficult, but at the same time actually worked okay. But with the employer brand at least, we're able to basically talk across therapy area, across any area in over noise, but still have this central essence of change as part of our, part of our brand communications. So, where are we at today, and what's happened, and some conclusions of, of, of the story? We were fortunate that last year we were able to relaunch our, our vision, our values, that what was called the Nova Noise Way of Management in the bottom of the brand house, um, is now redeveloped and renamed the Nova Noise Way. Uh, it's all our visions, and it's all our essentials that we expect people to live up to. And I don't know if you know, but I think the exciting story about Nova Nordisk and also Novozymes for that matter, and perhaps why these two companies have good images as well, both globally and in Denmark, is that every department in the Novo group is actually facilitated every three years by independent facilitators to see are we living up to the 10 essentials within this piece or in the, in the, in the Novozymes group's vision and values to see that we're actually living up to this. So it's not only about putting the poster on the wall and uh, that's let's get on with things, it's really part of who we are. And we're, we're actually tested, are we living up to it as well? And as part of this, we were able then to redevelop the Nova Noise brand house and talk about, okay, so what are our strengths now in 2011 versus 2004? So using the same methodology that we'd used to launch the brand in 2004, we're able to then redefine it into our great product portfolio, our science work, our people, our culture, our education support programs and policy and prevention. And now we can fill these with even more stronger assets than we ever have before and really communicate about how we're changing diabetes. So it's very fortunate that our executive management decided 10 years after our demerger from Nova Zymes in 2011, we should redevelop our vision, our values, because that's given us a lot more momentum with our corporate branding work to say, this is what we believe in, this is what we're all about. And changing diabetes, you know, I joked it was a tagline, it came to that testing. 
it's now one of the first words in this piece. So it's moved from being something which was you know, a stamp, it's on my business card, to being something which is actually a part of the vision of what we're trying to do as an organization. And I think that has merit and it has strength to how strong and, and the work we're trying to do with the brand globally. The results speak for themselves. Um, again, all of you coming from Denmark have obviously seen our financial results, but I think it's interesting to see how big has that growth been over the last 10 years as well. It really has increased massively. Um, as has our amount of employees as well. I mean, and I've, I've just got the 2009 numbers, but also maybe to this point of Denmark versus global. I mean, we are now, I think we're almost about 58, 60% employees outside of Denmark than inside of Denmark. You know, so our, our company is changing a lot at the moment in terms of globalization. And with that comes the challenges as well of continuing to manage the corporate brand. But of course, that's the interesting thing. The last little piece of real insight and real secret stuff, back to Klaus's point, is that we have actually developed a methodology that if you invest in your corporate brand, you invest in positioning yourself as a leader, it has a knock-on effect with your reputation, your image, but want of a better word. But the work done um, around reputation, I, you know, are you trusted, is it a good feeling, are you in a high esteem, actually has a correlation with the work and the effort you put into your corporate brand. Now, I know there's a lot of um, different discussions in, in the academic world about branding versus reputation and how are these two things interlinked. We've actually been able to prove it, and I've just actually published a chapter in the Oxford Handbook of Corporate Reputation about exactly that and the Nova Noise case. Um, because, and the academics are quite excited about it, um, but as a practitioner, which is what they call me, I'm not an academic, I'm a practitioner, I'm practicing what they preach. Um, it is, you know, we've actually been able to say that there is massive return on investment on in corporate branding. And these two things are completely interlinked. Um, of course, I'm not gonna pretend that all of these great results up here are down to my corporate branding work. They're also down to brilliant management, brilliant communications, uh, you know, uh, great products, uh, some good fortune as well. But put those all together, you certainly get a very, very strong corporate brand. So in conclusion, um, back to that Leadership with responsibility and leading the fight against diabetes. What we believe in a, in a kind of very central part of our business plan is that if we have a clear purpose, change diabetes, attuned to societal needs and expectations, somebody's expecting somebody to take leadership in diabetes care, that's going to lead to some kind of evidence of corporate responsibility, some kind of accountability that you're living up to what you're saying. There's some authenticity as part of that. That, in turn, is going to hopefully lead to some kind of distinct company reputation. And at the end of the day, trust that we trust in who you are. Hopefully, that's going to also lead to some kind of employee engagement, customer access, loyalty, which is perhaps why Nova Noise is frequently voted one of the best places to work around the world. Um, and hopefully, that employee engagement is going to lead to some kind of innovation, some kind of success, some kind of new products in our pipeline. And at the end of the day, sustainable profits, share premium, and then the circle continues. And this is the circle we've basically been doing over the last six, seven years. We've been basically building up that clear purpose and driving that forwards as we go. So um, that's all I have. I'll just put this five minutes. Thank you very much.